Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls is a group of three waterfalls at the southern end of Niagara Gorge, spanning the border between the province of Ontario in Canada and the state of New York in the United States. The largest of the three is Horseshoe Falls, also known as Canadian Falls, which straddles the international border of the two countries. The smaller American Falls and Bridal Veil Falls lie within the United States. Bridal Veil Falls is separated from Horseshoe Falls by Goat Island and from American Falls by Luna Island, with both islands situated in New York. Horseshoe Falls, also known as Canadian Falls, is the largest of the three waterfalls that collectively form Niagara Falls on the Niagara River along the Canada-United States border. The Bridal Veil Falls is the smallest of the three waterfalls that make up Niagara Falls. It is located on the American side, in New York State, Luna Island separates it from the American Falls and Goat Island separates it from the Horseshoe Falls. The Bridal Veil Falls faces to the northwest and has a crest 56 feet, 17 meters, wide. Luna Island being very small, the Bridal Veil is similar in appearance to the American Falls, starting with a vertical fall of 78 feet, 24 meters, followed by the water violently descending the tailless boulders to the maid of the mist pool 103 feet, 31 meters, below. The total vertical drop is 181 feet, 55 meters. The crest elevation of the falls is 508 feet, 155 meters. The Cave of the Winds attraction allows visitors to walk up to the base of Bridal Vale Falls. A pedestrian bridge crosses from Goat Island to Luna Island several yards, meters, upstream from the crest of the falls. The waterfall has also been known in the past as Luna Falls and Iris Falls. Part of the Niagara River, which drains Lake Erie into Lake Ontario, the combined falls have the highest flow rate of any waterfall in North America that has a vertical drop of more than 50 meters, 160 feet. During peak daytime tourist hours, more than 168,000 cubic meters, 6 million cubic feet, of water goes over the crest of the falls every minute. Horseshoe Falls is the most powerful waterfall in North America, as measured by flow rate. Niagara Falls is famed for its beauty and is a valuable source of hydroelectric power. Balancing recreational, commercial, and industrial uses has been a challenge for the stewards of the falls since the 19th century. Niagara Falls is located 27 kilometers, 17 miles, north-northwest of Buffalo, New York, and 121 kilometers, 75 miles, south-southeast of Toronto, between the twin cities of Niagara Falls, Ontario, and Niagara Falls, New York. Niagara Falls was formed when glaciers receded at the end of the Wisconsin glaciation, the last ice age and water from the newly formed Great Lakes carved a path over and through the Niagara Escarpment en route to the Atlantic Ocean. The features that became Niagara Falls were created by the Wisconsin glaciation about 10,000 years ago. Glaciation is the accumulation of ice in a given area when more snow falls in winter than melts in summer. The resulting body of ice is termed a glacier. When ice accumulates over many years, a glacier's own weight causes it to flow like an extremely viscous, thick, liquid. As a glacier flows, it tends to cover an ever larger land area. If a glacier covers more than 12 million acres, 50,000 square kilometers, it is termed an ice sheet. The retreat of the ice sheet left behind a large amount of meltwater, see Lake Algonquin, Lake Chicago, Glacial Lake Iroquois, and Champlain Sea, that filled up the basins that the glaciers had carved, thus creating the Great Lakes as we know them today. Scientists posit there is an old valley, St. David's Buried Gorge, buried by glacial drift, at the approximate location of the present Welland Canal. When the ice melted, the upper Great Lakes emptied into the Niagara River, which followed the rearranged topography across the Niagara Escarpment. In time, the river cut a gorge through the north-facing cliff, or Cuesta. Because of the interactions of three major rock formations, the rocky bed did not erode evenly. 
The Caprock Formation is composed of hard, erosion-resistant limestone and dolomite of the Lockport Formation, Middle Silurian. That hard layer of stone eroded more slowly than the underlying materials. Immediately below the Caprock lies the weaker, softer, sloping Rochester Formation, Lower Silurian. This formation is composed mainly of shale, though it has some thin limestone layers. It also contains ancient fossils. In time, the river eroded the soft layer that supported the hard layers, undercutting the hard caprock, which gave way in great chunks. This process repeated countless times, eventually carving out the falls. Submerged in the river in the lower valley, hidden from view is the Queenston Formation, Upper Ore Division, which is composed of shales and fine sandstones. All three formations were laid down in an ancient sea, their differences of character deriving from changing conditions within that sea. About 10,900 years ago, the Niagara Falls was between present-day Queenston, Ontario, and Lewiston, New York, but erosion of the crest caused the falls to retreat approximately 6.8 miles kilometers, southward. The shape of Horseshoe Falls has changed through the process of erosion, evolving from a small arch to a horseshoe bend to the present-day V shape. Just upstream from the falls' current location, Goat Island splits the course of the Niagara River, resulting in the separation of Horseshoe Falls to the west from the American and Bridal Vale Falls to the east. Engineering has slowed erosion and recession. During the 19th century, tourism became popular, and by mid-century, it was the area's main industry. Theodosia Burr Alston, daughter of Vice President Aaron Burr, and her husband Joseph Alston were the first recorded couple to honeymoon there in 1801. Napoleon Bonaparte's brother Jerome visited with his bride in the early 19th century. In 1825, British explorer John Franklin visited the falls while passing through New York en route to Cumberland House as part of his second Arctic expedition calling them so justly celebrated as the first in the world for grandeur. In about 1840, the English industrial chemist Hugh Lee Pattinson traveled to Canada, stopping at the Niagara Falls long enough to make the earliest known photograph of the falls, a daguerreotype in the collection of Newcastle University. It was once believed that the small figure standing silhouetted with a top hat was added by an engraver working from imagination as well as the daguerreotype as his source, but the figure is clearly present in the photograph. After the First World War, tourism boomed as automobiles made getting to the falls much easier. The story of Niagara Falls in the 20th century is largely that of efforts to harness the energy of the falls for hydroelectric power, and to control the development on both sides that threatened the area's natural beauty. Before the late 20th century, the northeastern end of Horseshoe Falls was in the United States, flowing around the Terrapin Rocks which were once connected to Goat Island by a series of bridges. In 1955, the area between the rocks and Goat Island was filled in, creating Terrapin Point. In the early 1980s, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers filled in more land and built diversion dams and retaining walls to force the water away from Terrapin Point. Altogether, 400 feet 120 meters, of Horseshoe Falls were eliminated, including 100 feet, 30 meters, on the Canadian side. According to author Ginger Strand, the Horseshoe Falls is now entirely in Canada. Other sources say most of Horseshoe Falls is in Canada. The only recorded freeze-up of the river and falls was caused by an ice jam on March 29, 1848. No water, or at best a trickle, fell for as much as 40 hours. Water wheels stopped and mills and factories shut down for having no power. 
In 1912, American Falls was completely frozen, but the other two falls kept flowing. Although the falls commonly ice up most winters, the river and the falls do not freeze completely. The years 1885, 1902, 1906, 1911, 1932, 1936, 2014, 2017 and 2019 are noted for partial freezing of the falls. A so-called ice bridge was common in certain years at the base of the falls and was used by people who wanted to cross the river before bridges had been built. During some winters, the ice sheet was as thick as 40 feet, 12 meters, to 100 feet, 30 meters, but that thickness has not occurred since 1954. The ice bridge of 1841 was said to be at least 100 feet thick. On February 12, 1912, the ice bridge which had formed on January 15 began breaking up while people were still on it. Many escaped, but three died during the event, later named the Ice Bridge Tragedy. The enormous energy of Niagara Falls has long been recognized as a potential source of power. The first known effort to harness the waters was in 1750, when Daniel Joncaire built a small canal above the falls to power his sawmill. Augustus and Peter Porter purchased this area and all of American Falls in 1805 from the New York State government, and enlarged the original canal to provide hydraulic power for their gristmill and dannery. In 1853, the Niagara Falls Hydraulic Power and Mining Company was chartered, which eventually constructed the canals that would be used to generate electricity. In 1881, under the leadership of Jacob F. Shulkopf, the Niagara River's first hydroelectric generating station was built. The water fell 86 feet, 26 meters, and generated direct current electricity, which ran the machinery of local mills and lit up some of the village streets. In 1961, when the Niagara Falls hydroelectric project went online, it was the largest hydropower facility in the Western world. Today, Niagara is still the largest electricity producer in New York State, with a generating capacity of 2.4 gigawatts, up to 1,420 cubic meters (380,000 US gal) of water per second is diverted from the Niagara River through conduits under the city of Niagara Falls to the Lewiston and Robert Moses power plants. Currently between 50% and 75% of the Niagara River's flow is diverted via four huge tunnels that arise far upstream from the waterfalls. The water then passes through hydroelectric turbines that supply power to nearby areas of Canada and the United States before returning to the river well past the falls. Thank you.